Hello boys and girls and welcome to Magnitude Lesson 2. Yesterday you did a Nearpod where you learned of what does magnitude mean, what are some key words I use when I am talking about magnitude, and then you practice doing some different um, magnitudes where you had to pick the right answer. Which one was the most correct? So what we're gonna do today is we're kinda gonna review all of that and practice a little bit more. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at my computer screen just like we would look on our big smart board, but I don't have that in my house, obviously. So we're gonna look at it on my computer screen and talk about what are some of those key vocabulary words that we will use when we talk about magnitude and then also we're going to practice some and I've made an anchor chart that we're going to use and then I also was lucky and I brought some blocks home so we're also going to try and do a little bit of that together too so bear with me as I try to get through this lesson um, just using my phone okay all right, so let's get started looking at these, uh, the key vocabulary. And I was just trying a lesson I messed up, so now I'm doing it for a second time. So the first word we need to know is magnitude. And what does that mean? Magnitude is the size of something or amount. So the size or amount of something. Then we need to know what, what does the word reasonable mean? And reasonable means that it is fair and sensible. It makes sense. If something is reasonable, it makes sense. So you would need to know that because we do reasonable magnitude. And here we go, those words together. And reasonable magnitude is a size or amount that makes sense. So that's what we're going to be practicing these next two weeks. Reasonable magnitude. Can we fit 500 people in our classroom? What do you think? What would, could 500 people fit in our classroom? Think about how many students we have, 21, plus a teacher, and think about how tight that gets sometimes, especially during centers and different activities that we're doing. Now, think about 500. That was just 22. 500 people in our classroom. Does that make sense? Is that reasonable? No. There are 500 people could not fit into our classroom. So that is not a reasonable guess and that's not reasonable magnitude, okay? Let's keep going. How many people can fit in a car? So what would be a reasonable guess for how many people fit in a car? So we're gonna use what we know. I know that a car usually has a back row and a front row. Two people usually sit in the front row and maybe two or three sit in the back row. So a reasonable guess might be five, okay? Anywhere around five would be reasonable. Would 50 be a reasonable guess for fitting in a car? No. Would that be a reasonable guess for a bus? Yeah but not a car. How many people can fit in a boat? So boats can be many different sizes. If I'm using this picture, I can see that this girl already takes up about half of the boat. So when I'm thinking how many people can fit in a boat, I might say about two, two or three, depends on the size. Well, I'm gonna use this picture. So I might say about two, about two people. Could be less, could be a little more, about two. That makes sense. So to, to determine reasonable magnitude, we need to estimate. What does estimate mean? If you know, I would love for you to say it out loud. Estimate means to find a number that is close to the actual amount. It doesn't have to be exact, but it just needs to be close to it. So for example, if I was talking about 
how many blocks are on the floor right now. I just need to estimate and that means make a guess to a close. So if I know that this is five, I would say that this is probably around 30 blocks, right? Five would not be reasonable and 100 would probably be way more. Uh, way too much. So let's see, we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, oh, 30, uh-oh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 73. So was my guess a little off? Yes. But was it off by hundreds? No. Was it off by just, um, was it lower? Like, was I way too high? No, not really. But that's okay, it, we're just taking a guess. So when we do guess, we usually guess a one digit, a two digit, and a three digit number. So sorry if I just confused you. But if you look at my um, board right here, I said about three, about 30, about 300. So what would be the closest guess? Is it closer to 330 or 300? 30, it would be closer to 30. 70 is the closest number, right? Okay, let's continue on. Oh, sorry. Use what you know plus what you see to make an estimate. Schema plus clues. So schema is what you already know it's your prior knowledge plus clues that you see in the pictures or in front of you. So let's do an example. About how many meatballs? Hmm, is it closer to three, 30, or 130? So I can see really easily because there's not that many meatballs here that it's gonna be closer to three. So that one was pretty easy. About how many sprinkles are on the cupcake? So I'm not gonna go and count each one, but I see way more than one. Hmm, 10 seems like a good guess. 100? No way, There's it is not close to 100 uh, because that whole cupcake would be covered. So a reasonable magnitude or a reasonable guess would be 10 sprinkles for that cupcake. We're gonna do one more here. About how many beads does the necklace have? 220 or 200? Well, I can see that it is more than two. There's 20, that looks pretty good. And then 200. And I know there are not 200 because I know that 200 is a very big number. And so this is closer to 20. So you can always, not always, but sometimes you can check to see if you were close to being right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there are 18 beads. Is that about 20? It sure is, it's just 19, 20 off. So that would be a reasonable guess, okay? So let's look at my anchor chart. So magnitude means a size or amount that makes sense. To determine magnitude, you we need to estimate. An estimate means find a number that is close to the actual amount. So here I have some different problems that we're gonna do. So here is the first one. About how many pieces of candy are here? So is it about 5, 50, or 500? What do you think this amount is closest to? Five would be the correct answer. It is closer to the number five than it is 50. So that makes the most sense. Let's look below. 
about how many pieces of candy? Seven, 70, or 700? And yes, this does look like a lot, so I know that it's more than seven. 70 or 700, hmm. I know 700 is close to 1,000. And this looks like a lot, but not that much. So what would be the answer? 70. 70 is the reasonable guess for those. Let's look over here at the lollipops. About how many pieces of candy? 880 or 800? What do you think? Eight, yes, eight pieces of candy is correct. All right, let's look at the jelly beans below. Oh, wow, you can't even see all of them through there. See, some are buried, it looks very crowded. So I know that it's way more than two. I mean, I see two just right there, so it's way more than two. I even think this is way more than 20. I think the reasonable guess for this would be 200. Do you agree? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Should see some thumbs up right there. That's uh, close to 200. There's so many buried under there. All right, let's go up here and look at this one. About how many pieces of candy? Three, 30, 300. Hmm, I see more than three. It's not close to three. No way there's 300. So my reasonable guess is gonna be 30. There are probably about 30 pieces of candy there, okay? Oh, wow. Let's look at this one. Look at all that candy. So what are we going to guess? Oh, my goodness. Is this reasonable at all? No. That is not even reasonable. Look at all that. Nowhere close to one. Ten is not even close to being reasonable. Way more than 10. There's 10 like right here. So the right answer has to be 100. There has to be about 100 there. All right, then we have a couple more gumballs to do. About how many gumballs do you see? Three, 30, 300. Hmm, I see more than three. 30 could be right. 300, I could see air bubbles in there so that means they're not even that crowded in there so what is going to be the magnitude of this gumball machine 330 or 300 30 30 would be the right answer let's look at this gumball machine about how many gumballs do you see 1 10 100 well i see way more than one that's not an option 10 or 100. Now I see that it is packed in there. They're all layered up on each other. So I think it's got to be more than 10. So my reasonable guess, the magnitude of gumballs in here is 100. All right, and two more. And sorry, my printer was running out of ink. So it's a little, um, a little fuzzy. So about how many gumballs do you see here? So I see a lot of open space in this gumball machine. So four, 14, or 140. What is your guess? 14, yes, 14 would be the reasonable magnitude for that one. More than four, less than 140, more around 14. And then the last one. About how many gumballs do you see? Seven, 70, 700. 700 is ridiculous. That is just way too much, right? That doesn't even make sense. So 70 or seven, even 70. I can look right here and from all of our number talks, I can kind of tell you that number like this. I see three, two, which is five, and then two more is seven. So I was able to see those number, that number seven pretty quickly um, after all those number talks we've done. So, remember, magnitude is the size or amount that makes sense. You are going to guess, give a reasonable estimate or guess of how many there are. And we're always doing one digit, two digit, three digit, 
numbers. Those are what we go for when we're taking a guess. So if you wanna practice at home, you can fill Tupperware up or maybe a drinking glass at see-through. Your, maybe your brother or sister, mom and dad, whoever you have at home, they could fill it up. And then they give you three choices. They could fill it up with pennies, cereal, goldfish, pretzels, cotton balls, anything that you have at home. And they could say, what's the magnitude in this? And then you'd have to make a reasonable estimate of what, <coughs> excuse me, of what you think is in there. Is it more like three, 30, or 300? What makes the most sense, okay? So that could be a fun game that you play with your parents, okay? Tomorrow, you're gonna have a little slideshow where you practice looking at a picture and making a guess with three options. Then the last slide is for your parents to, it has a teacher modeling a game and you could play that game with your parent or your guardian, whoever you have at home um, to practice magnitude as well. I don't have that many resources like worksheets because this is just a standard for Virginia. So there aren't that many things out on the internet that I'm able to post for you. Um, so you have the SOL workbook that was sent home with you and that will be your activity to turn in by Monday, okay? So save that for once you've really understood what you're doing, okay? So I will um, see you on Friday is the next time that you'll have a video from me. Tomorrow you have a power or a slideshow on Google, okay? All right, see you next time.